So we're starting a new unit today. Um, and it's the properties of functions unit. And we're going to focus specifically actually today and tomorrow on one-to-one -one and inverse functions. And this is going to be part one of the video. So I'm going to have a video for today and a video for tomorrow. Um, but what we're looking at, first of all, is that there's four different ways to represent a function. We've got a mapping, which we'll look at a little bit more closely here in a minute, but that's the illustrations that are on the paper right here. A set of order pairs, which we're used to. A graph, which we're used to. And an equation, which we're used to when it comes to those functions. So, but what a mapping is, is it usually has two categories. So in one particular case, we've got the state. And then we're going to map it over to, in this particular case, it's population. So what this is saying is that Indiana has a population you're welcome, of 6.4 million people. And Washington has a population of 6.7 million people. And South Dakota has a population of 800,000 and so forth. That's all it is. Same thing over here with the animals. It's looking at the animals and what their life expectancy is. A dog and a cat live for 11 years, roughly. A duck, a lion, a pig live for 10 years, roughly. A rabbit lives for seven years. So it's just another way to organize some data. So as we look at this, it says, first of all, name the state that has a population of 0.8 million people. Which state has a population of 0.8 million people? South Dakota. Name the animal whose life expectancy is 10 years. Well, there's more than one. Here's a 10, looks like a duck, a lion, a pig. the difference between the functions in these above mappings? Well, if we look close, sometimes the obvious is hard to see, but if we look a little bit closer, what we see is that there are no repeats. In the state mapping, or the state, what is it, population mapping, there's no repeats there. And there's a special name for a function that doesn't have any repeats in it, and it is called one-to-one, -one. special name. One to one. So if we take a look here at um, definition, we need to go backwards for a minute and review our idea between behind functions, and then one-to-one -one functions, or something that's not a function. So, um, a function is one-to-one -one if no y in the range is the image of more than one x in the domain. In other words, a function is not one-to-one -one if two different inputs correspond to the same output. The mappings below illustrate the difference between non-functions, functions that are not one-to-one, -one, and one-to-one -one functions. Well, let me see if I can make it a little bit simpler. If we look at this first pink and blue diagram here, we've got x1 mapping to y1. We've got x2 mapping to y2. And we've got x3 mapping to y3. We don't have, first of all, any repeats at all in the domain. And because we don't have any repeats in the domain, this is 
function. The x values don't repeat. Well, what happens here is that we also have no repeats in the range, in those y values there. And because there's no repeats in the x values and there's no repeats in the y values either, this is also a 1 to 1 function. When we look at the middle diagram here, we have x1 that maps to y1, we have x2 that maps to y1, and we have x3 that maps to y3. Again, there's no repeats in the domain. The x values do not repeat, which means that this is a function. But in terms of order pairs, x1, y1, we also have x2, y1. Because there's a repeat in the y's, this is not 1 to 1. And thirdly here, our third diagram, we have x1 that maps to y1, we have x1 that maps to y2, and then we have x3 that maps to y3. X1 is repeated. X1 is associated with the Y1. X1 is associated with the Y2. Because there's a repeat, this is not a function. The domain repeats. The X values repeat. So if we look at the bottom of the paper there, determine whether the following functions are 1 to 1. Well, negative 2, 6, negative 1, 3, 0, 2, 1, 5, 2, 8. What do we think? Yes or no? Yes. We don't have any repeats. But if we look at example B, we probably or hopefully do see a repeat. We've got a repeat of 6 there, and we've got a repeat of 6 there. So this one is not 1 to 1. Well, not only can we look at functions in terms of 1 to 1, in, in terms of an ordered pair, we can also look at a function um, of a graph and determine whether it's one to one. And to determine whether a graph of a function is one to one, we use a horizontal line test. And horizontal line test is very similar to the vertical line test. And all it says is if any horizontal line ever touches our graph more than once, then the function is not one to one. So in this particular case, again, the color is a pinkish, purplish color here. Here's the horizontal line. And it didn't have to be that particular one. But because this horizontal line touches here, and it touches here more than once, this means that the function is not one to one. It's still a function. If you recall, the vertical line test says, and I'm going to erase this so I don't know if you should draw that on your paper, but if you draw any vertical line on here and it never touches the graph more than once, then it is a function. So there it is a function. But the issue then is if we draw the horizontal line, we can't touch more than once. We could have drawn any particular horizontal line the second that it touches more than once, then that, that means that it's not one to one. So I'm um, really sorry, but my example is got the wrong wording here. It says determine if the function has an inverse by graphing. And it, it should say determine if the function is one to one. 
photography. So we're going to take our graphing calculators and we're going to type in these functions. So our first function go to y equals it is x cubed plus 3x squared oh darn it Try this one more time. X cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. We're going to look at the page. What looks like that? Let me know if you need help with your calculator. I'll be glad to try to help with that. Is this function one to one? Yes. There's no horizontal line that ever catches more than once. So yes, this is a one to one function. Let's type in the next one. And it is x squared times x minus 3. Let me look at the picture. There's a picture. What do we think? Is it 1 to 1? Nope. Even though I make that a little bit smaller here to put it in, right there, we touch the graph one, two, three times. It's not one to one. So we'll try one more time. Cubed root of x. When we go back to y equals and clear that out, remember that the cubed root function is on the math button of your calculator. Math, number four cubed root of x. It's one of my favorite graphs. What do we think? Is it one to one? Yes, it, it actually is. Because this keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up. And down and down and down and down and down and down. The horizontal line never touches a graph more than once. So this one also is a one-to-one -one function. So one last time. If the graph passes the horizontal line test, then it is a one-to-one -one function. If it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, then it's not a one-to-one -one function. Doesn't mean that it's not a function just means that it's not one to one. So as we take a look here, now switching gears to the inverse, if the function f is a set of order pairs, like x comma y, then the inverse of f denoted by f to the negative one. This is the abbreviation for inverse, f to the negative one. The inverse of xy is yx. So all that we're doing here, when we're looking at the inverse function, if we have 1, 1, and 2, 8, and 3, 27, to find the inverse, we're switching the order around. 1, 1 still stays 1, 1. 2, 8 becomes 8, 2. They switch places. 3, 27 becomes 27, 3. The x becomes the y, the y becomes the x. If we look at our domain, remember that the domain of a function 
are the x values of the order pairs. So the domain is 1 and 2 and 3. And our range are going to be the y values of the order pair, which are 1 and 8 and 27. Well, they're inverse here. We've written the ordered pairs. Again, domain are the x values of the ordered pair. So this is going to be 1 and 8 and 27. The x values of the ordered pairs. The range is going to be 1, 2, 3. Do you notice anything? domains and the range is switched. We switched the domain and the range. We switched the x and the y's. So that's what happens down here as well. So in other words, the domain of f becomes the range of the inverse and vice versa. The range of f becomes the domain of the inverse. 1, 2, 3 is the domain here. 1, 2, 3 is the range here. 1, 8, 27 is the range here. 1, 8, 27 is the range in the inverse. So a little bit more information here, background, hopefully that at least sounds familiar. It shouldn't be a new topic for you. Theorem. The graph of a function f and the graph of its inverse, f to the negative 1, are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. So what we have to do is we're going to graph the function and its inverse. We have a list of ordered pairs. So let's write down what the inverse is. And remember, to find the inverse, we switch the x and the y, or we switch the domain and range. Negative 3, 1 becomes negative 1, negative 3. Negative 1, 0 becomes 0, negative 1. 2, 1 becomes 1, 2. And 4, 3 becomes 3, 4. So we want to graph all eight of these ordered pairs. Going to graph the first, the original function, in black. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 1, 0. 2, 1. And 4, 3. And then graphing the inverse in red. Negative 1, negative 3. 0, negative 1. 1, 2. And 3, 4. And what our theorem says again is it says the graph of the function and its inverse are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. I am going to use my button here. The line y equals x goes from the lower left-hand corner of the graph to the upper, sorry, upper right-hand corner of the graph. And what happens here is if we folded this graph along this line, what happens is if we folded that, this red point would land on that black point. And 0, negative 1 would land over here on negative 1, 0. And 1, 2 would land on 2, 1. And 4, 3 would land on 3, 4, or vice versa. When we fold along that, the 1 would land on the other. It's symmetric with respect to that line y equals x.
so as we go through our next example what we have to do is we have to find the inverse of this I'm really sorry because I don't think that you have enough space to write necessarily I don't know if you would like to try to write on another piece of notebook paper worst comes to worst start at the far left of your paper there is that margin above our example words so you've got a little bit of space there um, and I'll do my best to fit it in here but especially if you're a big writer you might want to consider writing on a piece of notebook paper for this example and um, oops, it says that but it's not that I mean, I hope that I can So it says find the inverse of 3x, f of x equals 3x plus 6. Graph the function in its inverse along with the line y equals x. State the domain and the range of each function. So first of all, f of x. What we're going to be graphing is we're going to be graphing y equals 3x plus 6. And the nice part about this function is that it's already in slope-intercept form, but what's the scope of this line? It's true. And in fact, remember that slope is rise over run, so 3 over 1. The y-intercept of this line is 6. So when we come over here to graph, graph B first. B comes before M in the alphabet, so we're going to graph. This is the y-axis I forgot, and here's x. And then the slope is rise 3, run 1. But we can also go the other direction and still maintain our line. We went up 3 into the right one. We can also go down 3 into the left one. Down 3 into the left one. And I like to draw a fair amount of points because I don't, I mostly draw freehand, so the more points I have, the better chance I have of making a decent line. We'll see what happens here. But here's a function. And what we want to do now is we want to graph the inverse of this function. So we have to find the inverse. And so we need a little bit of a refresher on what to do. But we still are going to start with y equals 3x plus 6. We're we'll going to start with that. But remember what we did with inverses when we had ordered pairs. We switched the x and the y. So we are going to switch the x and the y. Nothing else moves. So it's going to be x equals 3y plus 6. Once we do this, we need to solve for y. We need to put our equation back in the slope-intercept form. So we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. And we have x minus 6 equals 3y. Okay, just a second. 3 times y, opposite operation is to divide by 3. And what we do, we get y equals x over 3 minus 2. What might be a little bit helpful for you is that this is 1x over 3. Sometimes that 1 is out of sight, out of mind. But once we have that information, what we can, what we know is that our slope is one third, and our y-intercept is negative two, and we're going to graph that. So when we come over here to graph, we've got b equals negative two, and then our slope is up 1 over 3. Up 1 over 3. 
we rose one and we went to the right three, we can also go down one and to the left three. So I'm going to actually go back and do up one and to the right three one more time. And do the best that I can to draw a line freehand. There's our inverse function. And then finally here, we right now what we've done, we've graphed the function, we've graphed its inverse, we need the line y equals x. So we'll come back over here and graph the line y equals x. And remember that's going to be from corner to corner through the origin, starting in the bottom left. And what we see, even though my lines aren't completely straight, is if we fold this graph along that lilac dotted line, this point should land on this point. 3, negative 1 should land on negative 1, 3. 6, 0 should land on 0, 6. 9, 1 should land on 1, 9. That's where our inverse comes into play. It's symmetric along that line y equals x. What's the um, domain of our green line? At least guess. Yeah. And I'll orient here for a second. But the domain in the range of any line with a slant is the same. In interval notation, it's negative infinity to infinity. And negative infinity to infinity stands for all real numbers. Any line with the slant has domain and range all real numbers. So if the domain in the range of the green line is all reals, well, luckily enough, the domain in the range of the blue line is the same. It's just that our range became our domain, and our domain became our range. The x's and the y's switched. Now that we have the, the graph completed, along with this domain and the range, what we want to do is we want to figure out the composition of our green equation and our blue equation. And then we're going to go the other direction. We're going to figure out the composition of our blue equation with our green equation. So I'm not sure that I said that very well, but um, I'm going to write these down again so that I've got some space. And our first function was f of x equals 3x plus 6. Again, this is where you might want a little bit more space and maybe um, some notebook paper. And then what we found is that our inverse function was uh, 1 third x minus 2. So there's our two functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to compose. Now, this is f of the inverse function. So we're going to take f and instead of writing the inverse f to the negative 1 of x, we're going to fill in what that equals, which in this case is 1 third x minus 2. We're going to take this value 
and we're going to put it back into our f function, which is 3x plus 6. In other words, take this value of 1 third x minus 2, we're going to replace the x with that value. It's going to be 1 third x minus 2. It's going to be 3 times 1 third x minus 2 plus 6. Well, 3 times 1 third x. Hopefully you don't need a calculator to type in 3 times 1 third. 3 times 1 third is 1x. 3 times 2 is 6. So it's x minus 6. And then we have plus 6 over here. And what does x minus 6 plus 6 equal? It equals x. Now, we're going to go the other direction. We're going to take our original function, and we're going to put it back into our inverse function. So it's going to be f to the negative 1. There's our inverse. And then what is our original function? Our original function is 3x plus 6. We're going to put that back into 1 third x times 2. So squeeze it in a little bit there, but I won't squeeze it in the rest. We're going to take 3x plus 6 this time. We're going to put it back into our blue function wherever we see x. So this becomes 1 third times 3x plus 6. That value is replacing the x in our blue function. Minus 2. And now what we want to do is we want to simplify. So we're going to distribute to 1 third. And again, hopefully you don't have to type in 1 third times 3 on your calculator, but you can. 1 third times 3 is 1x. 1 third times 6 is 2. Minus 2. And x plus 2 minus 2 gives us x. And we're going to continue this tomorrow. Let's see if we see a pattern throughout this if you don't remember it from algebra 2.